Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. My name is Ryan Rapp. I'm the Communications Manager at Brownells. Uh, I've, I've got to tell you that it's, uh, it's an honor to be standing in front of you uh, with these incredible people uh, helping to represent some of the absolute most patriotic organizations in America. That, that being, of course, Axelson Tactical, Team Never Quit, Special Operations Wounded Warriors, and Brownells. We first introduce the VIPs that are seated here and uh, one in the middle. Uh, Donna Axelson is right here. Donna's the mother of Jeff Axelson and U.S. Navy SEAL and Operation Red Wings hero, Matt Axelson. Corky Axelson uh, is seated back here. Corky, if you'd wave, everybody. Uh, Corky is Jeff and Matt's father. Uh, we have Jeff Axelson seated over here. Jeff is uh, Matt's brother, owner of Axelson Tactical. And in the middle, we have Cindy Dietz Marsh, mother of Navy SEAL and Operation Red Wings hero, Danny Dietz. Over to the right, we have Ron Bellin, SAW board member, Reaper Outdoors lead man, and retired U.S. Navy SEAL Master Chief. Also, Marcus Luttrell, retired U.S. Navy SEAL, Operations Red Wings veteran, founder of the Lone Survivor Foundation and Team Never Quit. And Pete Brownell, CEO of Brownells. We will hear from uh, some of them very shortly. Uh, but allow me to provide some background and an overview for today's announcement. Um, if you've read the book or seen the movie Lone Survivor, or done any research on Operation Red Wings, then you'll have undoubtedly heard the names Matt Axelson, Danny Dietz, and Marcus Luttrell. If you've read the book or seen the movie Lone Survivor, or done any research, uh, I'm sorry, that's my other paragraph. You'll know all these men and their teammate Mike Murphy, uh, all U.S. Navy SEALs, fought like hell against the Taliban, while severely outnumbered on a mountainside in Afghanistan. You'll also remember that 16 men, a combination of Navy SEALs, Army soldiers, were killed aboard a helicopter while trying to provide assistance. Finally, you'll remember that a man named Luttrell was the only one to come home to tell this inspiring story. <clears throat> while there's so much tragedy in the story of Operation Red Wings, there's also plenty of uh, hope and positivity. Today, we all become a part of that legacy, and we're asking the media members in this room, unapologetically, to help us tell this amazing story. Brownells is proud to join in this effort, alongside Axelson Tactical, Team Never Quit, to raffle a Matthew Axe Axelson tribute rifle right here, serial number Axe 01, uh, and 1,000 rounds of Team Never Quit ammunition to one winner. 100% of the proceeds from this rifle will go directly to Special Operations Wounded Warriors to assist with their efforts to assist members of the U.S. Special Operations community. We'll watch a short video and then hear from Donna Axelson. I'm uh, Corky Axelson, and I'm the proud father of Matthew Axelson. I'm Donna Axelson, uh, mother of Matthew Axelson, who was killed in Operation Red Wings. We have two children, Jeffrey, who's the oldest, and Matthew. Matthew was um, born in California, a typical California kid, spent most of his time outdoors. Involved in everything. I mean, he just, from one thing to the next. And... He played soccer in Little League and basketball, and he swam in the summer. From early on, both boys, they really did their very best at whatever they did. He was, a, he was a decent student, but when he joined the teams, he really wanted to excel, and he became very focused, became very determined, was going to give it 200%. His experience in the teams was amazing. He loved every minute of it. It was always something that he was looking forward to and you know, sharing what he could with us. The idea for the tribute rifle um, came from Jeff and we talked about it as a family of um, what we wanted to represent and what we wanted it to look like. We wanted to have something that was uh, similar, but maybe upgraded. You know, the base of it was going to be like the rifle he used that day. And of course, it's drifted away a little bit just because of technology and things like that. But just to just to honor those people, just make something that's a commemorative uh, and, and proceeds in all help with the foundations 
are supporting. I think there's a lot of stories out there that are not told, can't be told because maybe no one survived. Like Marcus survived and was willing to tell the story. Jeff has done, our older son has done a wonderful job etching different symbols and wording on the rifle itself so that people can use those to, to retell the story of, of um, the operation and of Matthew and of his brothers. Telling the story and having some something like the tribute rifle where people can look at it and continue um, to tell the story. I'd love to talk about Matt. I miss him a lot. But we're sure proud of him and his brother. To talk about Matt's legacy, it's Don Axelson. So it's always hard to follow something like that. Um, and, and it's said in the video that, you know, Matthew was born in California, and he was just a typical California kid outside doing lots of sports, and he loved a challenge. Um, so whether it was skiing or golf or tennis or swimming or whatever it was, he, he loved a challenge. And he and his brothers would, his brother would, you know, challenge each other, so they would work together. He graduated from college with a degree in political science and worked for about a year and called us and, and said, you know, I just don't feel, feel fulfilled. So before I get on with my life, I want to give back to my country. And uh, he said he was going to join the teams. And, and I knew that, that when he decided to do that, um, that he would be successful because um, both my children are very strong-willed, and when they um, set their mind to something, uh, they can do it. Um, the summer that he was going through buds, my husband and I were living in Europe at the time, but I was home during the summer, and um, I would go out to the lighthouse there at Point Loma, and I kind of pray over Coronado and Matthew and what he was going through and kind of, you know, help him through the, the times. Um, he loved being a SEAL. Um, the trainings that he had the opportunity to do, the two that he wanted most of all, and he was able to do that, was sniper school. And if you know anything about sniper school, you go through as a, as a pair, as a team, and he went through um, with Morgan Luttrell, Marcus's twin brother. Um, and they uh, made it the first time through by supporting each other, because if you pass as a team or you don't. Um, that was one of the schools that he wanted to do and, and loved it. The other one was called Haloing, where you drop, jump out of a helicopter at 30,000 feet, and he was able to do that, so he just thought that he was living the life. Um, when he would call from time to time, you know, I'm a mom and I'd be chatty, so i tell him what's going on in the neighborhood and all that kind of stuff, and then his dad would get on the phone and he'd say, so, and his dad was in Vietnam, so his dad would say, so what are you doing? Matthew would say, I'm working. And he'd say, yeah, but what are you doing? And he'd say, dad, I'm doing all the things I was trained to do. So he was very closed mouthed about what he was doing, um, but he loved his job. And um, people are always very appreciative of, um, of his service and the family sacrifice. But I need to tell you that, um, with our all volunteer military, the men and women that are serving want to be serving. They love their country. Matthew loved his country. Um, and if you're gonna lose a child, fighting for your country is certainly the best way to do it. So, um, and I'm so proud of Jeff and his vision for um, the, the company that, that is a family endeavor, Axles and Tactical and just giving back to our veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. To tell us about the Matt Axe Axelson tribute rifle, 
Please invite Jeff Axelson to the stage. So, um, thank you guys for doing this, and, uh, and working with Sal has been amazing too, and all this stuff. Um, everybody that's gone behind this and really helped us get the word out, and you know, the support's been amazing, amazing people through this, and continue telling the story of Matt and the guys. Um, what we wanted to do with this is essentially create a tribute piece that just housed all of this story in it, in it. so as people see this and, and pick it up and uh, look at it, it essentially tells the story through the engravings on it um, from the Alpha Platoon patch, uh, SCV-T1 Alpha Platoon patch to, uh, <coughs> to the Turbine 33 guys. Um, and, uh, And have something that really just kind of resembled what kind of was some, something as far as performance wise that you know we'd want to take into into combat today so this was was cool as a labor of love and being able to see the reaction that it's had out there and um just be able to see the impact that matt's lives and all the guys lives have had it keeps keeps us firemen every day so um thank you Oh, and the last thing too, we um, did the coins in here, because this is the, the first rifle, the, the number was zero 01, and it is the last one that's out there too, so all the other ones are gone. <coughs> and the coins tell the story alongside the kind of reflect the engravings that are on the rifle as well. So, thank you. Yeah, I think to, to Jeff's point, it's a it's a big deal. Um, Jeff made 99 of the rifles, uh, right, Jeff? Yeah. 99 rifles. This is the only one left, uh, and and Jeff specifically held on to Axe Zero One for a a cause that would that would earn uh, Special Operations Wounded Warriors a lot of money, and uh, so this is this is a, a real special piece. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. And Team Never Quit. Please welcome Marcus Latrell to the stage. All right, thank y'all for being here, truly. I, just to get into a little background about my relationship with the Axelsons, for those of you who aren't familiar, I served with uh, Matt Axelson in Operation Red Room. To back it up a little, a little bit more, my brother and him went through Buds together. They were swim buddies. So that, when you hear one of us say that, that means that they are closer than brothers. Because the only way you get through SEAL training is with uh, your classmates, and ultimately your swim buddy. And I remember the first time I met Matt, you know, we were, I'd come down to California, Morgan was going through Buds, and I met, Jeff as well, and we had been hanging out uh, back and forth for the, for the longest time. And I, that's how I really got to learn, uh, know the Axis and family. And then unfortunately, I, my face to face with the Axis family after Matt died, when I finally got out of the hospital and got back, just to make, just to tell you a little background on it, is I, I went around to all the families when I was healthy enough. My teammate uh, Garrett here, he was with me. He was part of the platoon in uh, Operation Red Wing. We went around to all the families and I told them specifically how their son died. And then I told him, I'll never tell you that story again. Because I don't want to see, I can't, the look on the face when you deliver that news is, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, hits you in a place you don't, you, nothing else can. One of the things about when somebody builds a rifle like this, so this family built this rifle to represent their son. So you know everything they put into it is 100% and from the heart. And that, the rifle just doesn't, in, in my, while I was sitting over there listening to talk about that, it, you got to understand, not only does that a, rifle represent Matt Axon, but it represents the history of the SEAL teams. Because we hold that cl uh, real close to the cuff. I mean, Matt was what, he was created from something that was before him and those guys before them. And we hold that, I mean, just as close to our chest as we possibly can. That's the reason the training never changes and anybody who comes into the SEAL teams and wears a trident, then you know what, they, what they're all about. Well, how T and Q got formed was it started it's nothing I invented. It's nothing we invented. We maybe just put a name on it because it's the way we live our lives in SEAL teams. It's the way we stay alive. Everything we touch has to be the best it can possibly be or we can't use it. 
Because when you all send us out to do the things that we do, can't, can't worry about that. That's the last thing you need to worry about. So when we got out, it's kind of a, one of those things, I'm not going to stop living my life the way I was raised and what I stood for, even though I'm out now. And we're slowly but surely migrating. Our generations are migrating out of there, and we've come back together. And we started TNQ because it's basically people asking me questions since I made it into the public eye about how I live my life. Why do I do this? Why I don't do that? And it's not a secret. I'm, we're not holding that away from anybody. TNQ represents everybody in this room. You've been in a bad spot and you got yourself out of it. Welcome to the team. All right. We cover down on each other. We're trying to create something here that if we, you're a part of this, man, you're a part of it. I'm not a team. I'm not a team leader. I'm on the team. You need my help. You holler out. We're going to back you up. It's a family thing. It started with that team environment. We come out, and now it's the family environment. We pick and choose. We look. I mean, and I, I try to talk about it when, you, when you're dealing with bringing ammunition and rifles up. There's great ammunition out there. There's great rifles out there. We're not saying that. We, I, I will always still use it. Winchester, you name it. We go find the people who've been in the gutter and just stayed down there until they crawled out. I'm like, you want to do something? You want to keep going with this? Hit your wagon to us, man. We'll take you as far as you want to go. With that, this is awesome. We, what we've done, Garrett and the team, is we cut away the red tape. We, I guess, you know, we, we cut the sides off of it. It's a straight shot. There's no BS. If you're part of this, you're not pulling your weight, we'll get rid of you. I mean, we outgrew you. If you outgrew us, congratulations, that's what we want. We won't turn our back on you, all right? And we'll never substitute quantity for quality. We can't do that ourselves. We never did it in the SEAL teams. And I can't change the way my mindset and everybody that comes into the team. And the unique thing about TNQ is there's people coming in all the time. There's always a fresh voice, all right? There's always somebody to put me in check. And if you're not doing that, then you're letting the team down. I'm no better than anybody else around here. And that's what all this is. This is a family. I know that this tribute rifle is built from the heart. That's why we help promote it. And we covet everything we see every day, what we love. And if you have that aspect of it, if you, if you really come from that part of it, then failing is really not an option. Falling down is. I mean, you don't think for one second you're going to try to do something and you're not going to go down, then you're in the wrong business. But just know that we're, you know, what we're trying to create here is somebody's going to back you up if you go down. And I, like I said, we didn't reinvent the wheel. I didn't learn this from, I, I learned this from them, from the families, from my teammates. And that's what we're trying to do here. That's what has been created. And this represents everything that was great about Matt Axis and how he lived and how he died. And he's a great man. And he's a great warfighter. I miss him every day. But don't, the one thing I try and tell people is don't, don't feel, I mean, yeah, I'm sad, you know, feel sad because the, the family members, they miss their kids. Don't feel sad about the way they died, all right? Oh, war fighters, that's how, that's how we do it, all right? It means something to us. And, and I think that's just another reason why what we created can't, we won't let it fail because I, I'll never disrespect the guys who put their lives on the line and died covering down on me by going down in the slump. I don't want anybody else around me to do it, and they don't let me do it. And don't think they don't have bad times. That's why I got the team. I'm like, hey, man, talk to me about something. Give my mind off this, and let's go like hell. That's the point, and that's what we're doing. So thank you all for being a part of it. Thanks for helping us out. Thank you, Marcus, and thank you for your continued service. As for the beneficiary of the funds raised, I'll ask Ron Bellin with Sal to come up and tell everyone about their vital mission. All right, I apologize right now because I'm really not a podium speaker, but I'll be loud and clear and concise. In 2005, I had the honor and privilege to serve with Marcus. Actually, in 2003, we served together in the Gulf, chasing down Al-Qaeda on, on the seas in the Gulf and just uh, chasing a lot of ghosts, to be honest with you. In 2005, I was a troop chief at SEAL Team 5, and I got word that we had some SDV guys coming in that were snipers, that were a recce unit, and that's what they're specially trained for, and specially, you know, and that's what they do. So I was like, bring them in, let's do this. So they came in, they joined our team, and we put them in the field right away. We went out to a FOB, first mission, first, I don't know, first two days. Marcus decided to get in a contact. You know, he wanted to try his weapon out, and the guys wanted to get a little, you know, feet wet. And they did. They did a hell of a job, you know. So uh, when they came back from that, we went out there with them and 
do some good things. That's actually a great story how that how it ends. I know. <laughs> and some things we can't tell you. <laughs> it's a great story. We'll do that over some uh, cocktails later. So, you know, with that being said, Marcus was the leader, you know, and I'm not sucking up to Marcus. I'm not, you know, we are friends. You know, I, I would never ask Marcus to do anything I wouldn't do. I'd never ask my guys to do something I wouldn't do. But these guys went out there one day, inserted in the field, one came back. And I cry. I do. So the video you guys just saw, you know, we did that. That was our production company. went out and sat with Donna and, you know, Corky. I'm in love with your wife, Corky, by the way. You know, But uh, that whole interview, what you guys saw, the, the emotion, the draw, I mean, if you'd have put a bucket under me, you'd have had a you know, bucket of tears. And we cried a lot that day. We did. There's nothing wrong with that. And I tell the guys that we deal with in Sal, this is where I bring in Sal. So Sal is an organization that takes guys hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, family retreats, and also doing other good things. You know, we're working on, right now, we extended our board and that uh, board membership. So we're going to do scholarship programs. We're going to do good for the families. We do good for our, our brotherhood. We are a team. One team, one fight. We're also a uh, family. And if you're a friend of the family, you are a family member. It's not blood. You know, we all have our families, our blood families. We got that. We'll take care of them. We'll die for them. We'll live for them. But more importantly, it's the your circle, your friends are part of that family. They have to be, because that's who you live with. That's who you go see every day, you talk to every day, whether it's at work, play, or whatever. And that's what we, how we feel in the teams. We're that tight. We will die for each other. We'll die for your families. I feel that way today for each and every member out there in the armed service. I don't care. I will. If you're in our circle, we will take care of you. So it's a brotherhood. And Sal's bigger than that. It's not just SEALs. It's not just Green Beret. It's not just Rangers, all right? It's not just the tier one guys. It's not just one group. It's all who have served with us and who have sacrificed, whether it's their families or whether it's themselves, whether it's in war, whether it's in training. We'll take care of these guys. We take care of our own. And I always challenge, this is my challenge. You guys can write this down. I want to challenge the military. I want to challenge the rest of the services out there. Take care of your own. If you're a Marine, your Army, your Navy, if you have enough power to do it if you all come together, and that's what we do every day. Every day, you know, we'll circle the wagons and do it. And that's what Sal does. So with that emotion I talked about, we sit around a campfire and you think guys are just going out hunting. And they're just beating their chest. Or, you know, wives are there, kids are there. But that circle around that campfire, we're finding out things that nobody else would ever find out. No counselor would find out. No wife's going to find out. No children, no father, no mother. Because we're talking as brothers. Somebody's having a hard time. We're going to find out how to take care of it and go direct action on them. We're going to take care of it. And we have. We received a letter just before Christmas. And Joel, who's the vice president of Sal, read it to me on the phone. And yeah, I had tears streaming down both cheeks, not just one, but both. This fills up, so if I cry for a long time, you'll see it. <laughs> it was a young man who was over in Afghanistan, lost some really close friends, got shot up himself, and uh, was an alcoholic. As we're sitting up there in Maine at this beautiful lodge, around a camp, uh, actually a fireplace, we didn't have a campfire that night, he's sitting on the cooler, and we're listening to him. And he's talking to us. And he finally says one night, I have a problem. And I haven't been able to tell anybody this. But he told us. Immediately afterwards, he went and got help. Fortunately, we also had his uh, gun he was there. Also going through, you know, on the hunt and enjoying himself. Six months later, he still hadn't had a drink when he got home to his wife and kids. Six months later, he writes us this letter that says he was ready to put a gun in his head. But he didn't. He's not going to. That's the impact we have. It's just not hunting, camping, hiking, fishing. And we don't take any money. 
Sal is an organization, 100% you know, of the board gets 0% of the money. Nobody gets paid. We do this voluntarily. I promote it every day. I don't care what it is. It's on our ammo box. I challenge all the family of brands. I challenged them last night when we had our meeting. Let's do this. Let's put these organizations on our boxes. Let's challenge. Let's challenge other folks. We're not looking for pity. We're not looking for, you know, handouts. We're just looking for support to help others out. And it's not just the members. It's their families. It's their friends. It's everybody here. And it's everybody out there. This is a great nation. And the nation's gotten bigger and bigger and more patriotic than it's ever been. It's the first time you come back on a, on a plane and they don't spit on you and they don't yell at you and they don't scream at you. Yeah, we have those folks that hang out by the gate. But guess what? The majority of America, I travel all over. Marcus tra travels all over. Most of the people here travel all over. And that's what we hear. We hear good things. We just have to keep that going. And that's what we're doing at South. I don't mean to sit here and ramble and ramble. We just have to get these points out. America's great. And with organizations like this, I wouldn't be involved with it. Lone Survivor, another great organization. You know, the Axison Foundation, great organization. And like Marcus said, with all the products we had, the products are great. We have great products. We're working on this. We, we, you know, we do. But he's absolutely right. It's what's behind them products. It's what's behind those foundations and what they're doing. So get on board with us all. It's a pick one. You have a choice, and we're giving you that choice. But today, you don't have a choice because Reaper Zero One says, buy some raffle tickets and get this weapon. It's a one of a kind. It's the first one made. It's the last one out there. It's a collector's item. They will never be made again, ever. Correct? I'm still in love, I'm still in love with you, Donna. Don't. <laughs> All right, so I'll close with this. I really want to thank some folks out there. You know, first I want to thank the, uh, the families, the Axelson family, you know, for all they've done, the Dietz family. Murphy's aren't here. You know, uh, it's fine. We still represent, right? We're still here. We're still with them. We're still thinking about them every day. Luttrell, the Luttrell family, and his entourage. Good job, Marcus. You got an entourage? You... That's all right. I won't give you no crap about it. I was your master chief. We'll talk later. <laughs> no, but uh, Marcus is doing great things. So when somebody said, is Marcus a hero? I said, no. Oh, that's what? No, he's not a hero. He's a crusader. He was carrying on his shoulders like I can't even imagine. Every day he gets up here and he talks to folks. Every day he gets asked these questions. Every day, he's got to think about it. He's a crusader. He's a warrior within. He's a family man. But more importantly, I say crusader because he carries that torch. He's got a bigger torch than anybody I know that he has to carry every day for the rest of his life. And I respect the hell out of him. I really do. And I respect the hell out of his family and everybody that circles him and supports him. If he ever needs anything, I'm there. I ask for nothing, I give all. All right. I want to thank, uh, you know, the Sal board that's here. I mean, without these guys volunteering, I got it easy, man. I'm always in front of people, and I like to talk, and I don't have no problem with it. I tell people what to do. Not that anybody does anything I say, but it still sounds good. The board, they do a heck of a job. They volunteer, man. We have veterans on the board. We have civilians on the board. And when I say that, we have business owners on the board, cooks. It doesn't matter. We have a nice clear board right now that's just professional and running it smooth and doing the right things. And we got the right people in place. I want to thank the Brownell, Brownell's family for, you know, having us here. Pete, thank you so much, sir. Um, this is big. This is huge to do this. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And thanks for all the hard work, you know, putting this together. So let's Reaper Zero One. Say buy some raffle tickets. I'm out. Thank you, Ron. Uh, now for the raffle details. Uh, Pete Brown out. Wow. 
Man, it's a privilege. We play a small part, but I want to say thank you. It's a real privilege to be even in the same room with some of these, some of these fantastic individuals that represent commitment and uh, can teach us as, a, as citizens of America what, what true commitment is. So thank you very much. You give all, like you said, and ask for none. So, you know, it kind of reminds me of something that um, when you're out there fighting for our way of life and you're out there dedicating it all and you're giving it all, when you come back, what are we going to give? When you're out there helping us in our time of need, when is it our time to help you in your times of need? And really, that's why when we looked at Sal, we decided that this is a good organization. 100% of everything they do goes right to help these individuals when they come back, help them, put them back in a lifestyle that they love, doing, living life with the people that they do love, and that's more than family, that's their teams. We're really proud to be part of it. And again, we just play a small part. So again, this is about raising money for this great activity, this great event. Hey, Governor, how you doing? Uh, this is... This is a great event, it's a great uh, project. Where you can buy these tickets, the important part, make sure this makes your press. Uh, Brownells.com slash Axe Rifle. That's where you can buy these tickets. And this is gonna be going on uh, from now until NRA show. July 4th. July 4th, sorry. Yeah, you can also buy these at the NRA show at the Brownells booth. So there's gonna be a time frame where you can buy this. Or today, you can, and during the SHOT Show, you can buy these at booth number, 10573. These are fifty dollars. So it's a good it's a great cause and all fifty dollars goes to help every one of these soldiers in their times of need. My challenge is to you as writers, as people are gonna get this message out and get it out now, get it out early, because the larger dollar amount that we need, the larger we can raise this, the more soldiers and the more warriors and the more people that need this help, we can get that money to them sooner. And you never know when that, that moment that they decide to open up to this team, to this group, could save their life and save their family. These are, these are very important moments. This is a very important pro project, and we play a small part, and we're really proud to be part of this team. We greatly appreciate it, and I, I applaud you guys for, again, giving it all and being dedicated. It's, it's great, a lot of great programs out there, and this is a great one as well. So please, get that message out there, and uh, have, have all your readers participate, and throw the challenge out at their feet, and make them participate as well. It's a great cause. So, um, it's a real honor, and I wanted to kind of put my mouth and my money together here. So, I have a little bit of a surprise for you. And if you could, can I have Ron come up? You don't. Let's go down front. So we want to present to you the first honorary check for ten thousand dollars. It's a great cause. Everybody get the routing number? <laughs> you got that right, Joe? Oh, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Great start. That's a surprise. I'm going to just go outside and flip around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Pete. Uh, so we'll get wrapped up here. Um, the, draw the drawing details for everybody that was taking that were taking notes. Uh, Fifty dollar ticket price. Again, really the main avenue for ticket sales uh, is brownells.com slash axe rifle. I'll allow everybody uh, time to write that down. Uh, the, the page is live now, so you can go there and buy raffle tickets there. Of course, uh, certain states can't do that, but the legal ease is there. Uh, 2016 SHOT Show, booth number 10573. Um, NRA annual meetings, booth 3401. Again, it goes through the 4th of July, and the winner will be announced on July 9th, uh, 2016. Um, at the end of it, you're welcome to come up and take photos. Also, I believe Jeff is going to be here to answer any specific questions about uh, markings on the rifle. Uh, but uh, at this point, does anybody have questions? If we have questions, just let me know who and uh, we'll get that person up on stage to answer questions. So just raise your hand if you have a question. Saul? 
Do you think we could maybe get Chief Bella and uh, Marcus to kind of hold up the weapon for? Yep, we can. You can certainly do. Yeah, we'll do photo ops right afterwards, Sal. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody? Anybody else? Lisa. Well, I think as parents, you know, we raise our children to be um, responsible people, to be good citizens. And, and if the desire of their heart is to serve the country, that, that might not be our first choice for them, particularly when Matthew said he wanted to be a SEAL. I knew that there was a challenge. I knew it was dangerous. But it has to be what they want to do with their life because we've raised them to the point, and I think it should make parents really proud that their children want to serve their country and be in the military. And I just think we really need to thank them for that and, and just encourage them. We had the opportunity to meet Charlie Daniels last year, and one of the things he said to us is he said, thank you for raising a patriot. So children who want to serve in the military have been raised by their parents to be patriots. And I think that um, is something all of us should be really proud of. Other questions? Can I tell a story? Yeah, come on up. About the <laughs> <laughs> Since nobody's asking a question. So uh, Marcus's wife, Melanie, is back there. Use the mic. <laughs> okay, Marcus's wife Melanie is back there, and she bought one of these rifles for her dad for Christmas last year. And after she gave it to her dad, her dad broke down and he said, I never thought you could outgift me. <laughs> because it meant so much to him. So I just thought that was a wonderful story. All right, uh, great. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Again, uh, folks will be available if you uh, need something. Uh, come on up and ask. Take photos, whatever you'd like. Thanks again.